In this unit we're looking at persuasion and the idea of uh, social influence. So how can we get other people to do the things that we want them to do, buy the products that we want them to buy, think the things that we want them to think. Uh, basically how can we get them to change their attitudes and their opinions? So how can we persuade them to do something uh, differently than what they previously expected to do? Um, or what they've previously done. So we usually have two ways of going about getting people to change their behaviors and their attitudes. One is through what we call the, the central route to persuasion and the other one is called the peripheral route to persuasion. So let's think about an advertisement. So if you're watching um, a car commercial and on the commercial they start talking about all the benefits of driving this car. It has great gas mileage, it has great safety features, um, it's won all of these awards it, for safety, for different things like that. Um, if they're telling you about all of the features that should make you want to buy this car, then they're using the central route to persuasion. They're actually kind of moving into your brain with facts and saying, okay, these are the reasons why you should buy this vehicle. Whereas if a car commercial uses an attractive spokesperson who is currently popular and this attractive spokesperson demonstrates that they use the vehicle, they're still attempting to persuade you to buy that vehicle, um, but they're not simply doing so by telling you how great the vehicle is. They're showing you that, you know, so-and-so really likes the vehicle, and if you like so-and-so, then you would like this vehicle as well. And that's what we call the peripheral route to persuasion. So we're not so much giving you information, moving straight into the brain with information, we're kind of going around the information and giving you kind of periphery information about who else likes the vehicle, things like that. So if you, you know, recent commercials, you think about the, the Fiat commercial with Charlie Sheen. And Charlie Sheen was, I don't want to say popular for a while, but he was definitely someone that people were um, thinking about and looking towards to wonder what thing was he going to do next. And so Fiat capitalized on that by saying, okay, well, we want people to think of our cars as, um, you know, flashy and interesting and um, unpredictable. And hey, Charlie Sheen seems pretty flashy and interesting and unpredictable. So let's get him to uh, drive a Fiat in this commercial. And so that would be considered the peripheral route to persuasion as opposed to the central route to persuasion where a person would come and say, okay, this is the car and this is all the safety features. And if you think about it, if we watched a commercial that was like that, unless that was exactly what we were looking for, we would be pretty bored and we'd probably change the channel. Um, so many times in advertisements, they'll give you some central information, but most of the information that they're going, you're going to get from that advertisement, from that propaganda, uh, from that persuasion attempt is going to be um, instead the more peripheral route to persuasion as opposed to the central route to persuasion. Um, so a lot of times when we see advertisements, uh, if it's for um, something that relates to a medical condition, we'll see a person in a white coat carrying a clipboard, which makes us think that that person um, is a doctor or is a researcher or something like that. And most of the time you'll see at the bottom it says, you know, um, non-doctor spokesperson or something like that. So it would actually indicate to you like, hey, this person may look like a doctor and they may be saying things that sound like they're a doctor, but they're really not a doctor. They're actually an actor. Um, so when we're, when we're trying to make our, our presenters look credible in order to relate that credibility of the presenter to the product, then we're attempting to change your attitude about a product. Um, so, you know, if we are watching a commercial for laundry detergent and this person comes on and says, you know, I am a mom to seven boys and we all know boys get dirty and I use Tide and it makes my clothes come out clean and then we show her boys, you know, before and after with dirty and not dirty pictures of their clothes, um, then that gives us kind of a, a credibility idea in terms of how well does Tide work if I'm a parent and I have kids who get dirty all the time. Um, so credibility is something that when you're looking at advertisements, you want to start to pick out, um, you know, how are they attempting to make this messenger, this person delivering the message regarding this product, how are they attempting to make them look 
credible. Um, are they using the central route to persuasion? Are they using the peripheral route to persuasion? Um, and we know that for people who are um, high in a need for cognition, they like to think about stuff, they like to understand how things work, then a lot of times the central route to persuasion is more likely to work with them to get them to um, purchase, change their attitude, whereas if we're not really interested, we don't really care about a product, then the central route to persuasion is more likely to work, or I'm sorry, the peripheral route to persuasion is more likely to work for us than the central route would. So if I need new windshield wiper blades, but I really don't care how they work or, you know, what the brand is, um, then if I see someone who is famous that I know of and they say, hey, I use Rain-X brand, then I'll say, okay, well, I'll go buy some Rain-X windshield wipers, sure, because I don't really care and I don't really know anything about windshield wipers and I don't care to learn anything about windshield wipers. Um, so. If people are high in a need for cognition, then more likely that the um, the central route to persuasion is going to work for them. Whereas the peripheral route works for people who you know don't have a lot of time, don't have a lot of mental energy to think about something, and they just want to know, okay, you know what what should I know in the short term about this product? Um, we also see that a lot of advertisers really use attractiveness when using some sort of um, model or person, a spokes spokesperson for their product. So if you watch TV and we watch a commercial and they're using a, a spokesperson, generally do you see someone who most people think is, wow, that guy's really ugly. No, generally you see an attractive, usually woman, unless it's a product geared towards males, um, at talking about the product or talking about how it will benefit you, things like that. So attractiveness of the communicator is going to be important in terms of um, persuasion. So if you want to learn more about um, how to influence people, persuasion, things like that, two book suggestions for you that I think you will enjoy. Um, first one is Influenced by Robert Cialdini, who is like one of the biggest researchers in influence in psychology, social psychology. So definitely something to check out. And then the other one is The Age of Propaganda. Um, Elliot Aronson is a fantastic writer, and I think that you would enjoy the book. And uh, his co-author is Anthony Prakanis, and both of them are um, well-known social psychological researchers. And there's lots of really good examples in this book, and it's very a uh, really entertaining read. It's not something where you feel like you're reading a textbook about how to, you know, persuade people. So hopefully you learned some interesting stuff this week about persuasion attempts. Hopefully you can recognize when people are attempting to persuade you um, and also try to make a, a more knowledgeable decision as opposed to using the uh, peripheral route to persuasion when making decisions. Thanks.